If I had a billion dollars, there are several things in my mind concerning how I'd spend it. First is a celebratory pizza and a cool vacation. Next, I'll be making plans on things to buy so I can have a peaceful retirement. Things like a prenup spouse, a large house in a private area with fiber optic internet cables and an extensive security detail, cars, maybe a jet, and of course, an investment portfolio. What about billionaire CEOs today? How do they spend their billions? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today, and I'll give you a hint rent, taxes, no wait, that's the average person. Ah <laughs> yes, cars, houses, vacations, and of course, stocks. Welcome back to our channel. Before we dive in, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss a video from us. Houses. When it comes to houses and properties, billionaires go the full length to make sure they get the best. And when you're worth nothing less than 10 digits, there's no limit to the type of property you can get for yourself on God's green earth. Because guess what color the dollar also is. Yeah, that's right. That's why you have billionaires like Jeff Bezos spending well over $35 million to buy and renovate a former textile museum in Washington, D.C. to convert it for entertainment purposes. This is just one of many houses that Mr. Bezos owns in America, apart from the houses in Medina, Beverly Hills, California, and New York City, making him one of the biggest landlords in the United States. Meanwhile, your favorite power couple, no, no, I'm talking about Jay-Z and Beyonce. Yes, these guys have properties worth around $116 million in the Hamptons, New Orleans, and Bel Air. And going by a lot of your comments, your favorite billionaire, Elon Musk, also has properties in Bel Air worth over $70 million. This includes a $17 million mansion and a $24 million estate. California is buzzing with the top 1% as Mark Zuckerberg, CEO of Facebook, also has a property in Palo Alto, California. He bought this 5,000-square-foot home for $7 million. He eventually eventually bought the surrounding properties of his neighbors, as well as putting the amount he spent on this house around the $30 million mark. Turns out, just like the users on Facebook, Mr. Zuckerberg wants his privacy. <laughs> He also has a townhouse in San Francisco worth a million dollars, as well as two properties in Hawaii worth over a hundred million dollars. And talking about buying your neighbors, the ex-CEO of Microsoft, Bill Gates, has a 66,000 square foot mansion in Medina, Washington that took him seven years and $63 million to build. After purchasing the land for $2 million, the property is now worth over $130 million. He also has two other properties in Southern California and Florida that are both worth about $27 million. Not all billionaires spend lavishly on houses, though. You see, Warren Buffett, the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, bought his current house for just over $30,000. Well, it was in 1958. And the 6,500 square foot home is worth around $800,000 today because, you know, everything is an investment to Mr. Buffett. But some people just go ahead and splash the cash. No modesty, no frugality, nothing like that. I'm talking of Lanai, Larry Ellison's private Hawaii island which cost him a half a billion dollars to purchase and develop. Forget the stuff about not having neighbors. Forget about buying a house to watch the value increase. With this island, you should forget all that. Because on this island, not only do you not have to bother about neighbors, but you also don't have any traffic. And as an investment, it probably doesn't matter since Mr. Ellison is focused on making the 87,000 square foot property a health utopia. And if you worked on the island during the pandemic, you might have had a taste of this utopia as Larry Ellison paid the full wages and benefits of all his employees on the island, as well as taking care of rent for businesses on the island. He plans to run the island completely on renewable energy and make it a tourist destination in the near future. The island has greenhouses powered by almost 2,000 Tesla solar panels. Yes, your favorite billionaire Mr. Musk is a fan of this as well. But perhaps the most exotic and thought-provoking property owned by any of our billionaires is the Antilia located in Mumbai, India. This building is 568 feet tall, covers 400,000 square feet and is owned by the richest man in India and the chairman of Reliance Industries Limited, Mukesh Ambani. This is the most expensive private residence in the world and is valued at $2.2 billion in 2020. The building is built to withstand earthquakes of a certain degree and have several amenities in its 27 floors, including four helipads, a really big garage, a 50-seat theater, a pool, a spa, elevators, terrace gardens, and more. Vacation. 
Vacations Larry Ellison's Lanai Island has several great features including two Four Seasons run hotels and two golf courses. And the secret 94 wedding of the Gates is said to have happened on the 17th hole of the Manel Golf Course. You see, this island has already been a tourist spot for the rich and its ownership has actually been passed down from one rich person to another over time. So this example begs the question, when these rich CEOs want to chill out, rest from all the enjoyment of their own homes and have a vacation, where else do they go? Two words words, vacation homes. Yes, it's easy to travel to Dubai or France or some other fancy place to view beautiful places and cultures and the ocean. Heck, if you saved up, you could do it too. However, if you're a billionaire, you get to buy the whole vacation experience for yourself alone. Take Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz, for example. He's not going to share a Florida beach with several people. Of course not. That's why he has a 10,600 square foot property with a Four Seasons developed vacation home in the Hawaiian resort area. With just $25 million of his wealth, Mr. Schultz secured the eight-bedroom home with fully fitted amenities like the game room, infinity pool, a media room, a jacuzzi, and nine bathrooms. Howard Schultz can also take in grand views of the mountains, lava rocks, as well as access to a golf course and a beach all to himself. It's not all in Hawaii, though. Worth almost $60 billion, co-founder of Bloomberg, Michael Bloomberg, has a mansion in Chelsea worth $25 million. This 6,200 square foot home is situated on a private street and has seven bedrooms, a morning room, a 90-foot backyard, and a living room. The house has impressive design and is accessorized with magnificent artworks and a ceiling mural. You can get into the impressive culture of the city, one of which is soccer. The experience of watching top rivals battle each other in the massive stadiums with fans singing is always a spectacle to behold. He just has to make sure he doesn't refer to the sport as soccer and he should be fine. Jets and Cars There's probably nothing that signals more as a sign of wealth than your automobile and private jet collection. And billionaire CEOs can't get enough of it. Jeff Bezos has two Gulfstream G650 ERs worth around 150 million US dollars, while he has an intense fleet of rare cars that are worth over 20 million dollars. Elon Musk himself has a car company, the famous electric car company Tesla, and he moves around with either the Tesla Model S or Model X, both of which are worth over a quarter of a million dollars. He also has interest in vintage cars like the Lotus Esprit submarine car from James Bond's The Spy Who Loved Me, which Mr. Musk purchased for $920,000. Elon Musk also has two private jets like Bezos, a Gulfstream G650 and a Gulfstream G550, both of which are around $140 million. Michael Dell, CEO of Dell, and Mark Cuban, owner of the Dallas Mavericks, have both also owned the $40 million Gulfstream 5. Investments This is definitely the bulk of the richest CEO's wealth. And to be honest, it's very hard to call it spending since buying and owning stocks is the primary way that the top 1% earn their wealth. It's one of the most ironic things of our age, but it works. Take Bernard Arnault, for example, as the third richest man in the world. Most of his wealth comes from his around 40% share in LVMH, the luxury goods company. Meanwhile, Warren Buffett is known specifically for making investments like these, and this has given him the title of Oracle of Omaha. Other forms of investment popular among billionaires is the buying of sports teams. Some popular billionaire sports teams owners include Roman Abramovich, owner of Chelsea Football Club, Mark Cuban, owner of the Dallas Mavericks, Mukesh Ambani, owner of the Mumbai Indians, and there are rumors that Daniel Ek, the CEO of Spotify, is looking to purchase Arsenal Football Club. People like Elon Musk and Mark Cuban have also shown a great deal of interest in crypto as a means of investment. In fact, at the beginning of 2021, Tesla announced that it would be receiving Bitcoin as payment for its cars. This has led people to wonder about the effect of the rich on the crypto market once they really get interested. What do you think? Do you think the rich will affect the crypto space negatively? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave us a like. You can check out the King Luxury channel for more videos all about luxury. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.